Hey guys, Darren back again with another quick controller repair video. Um, in front of me is the N64 controller, just in the classic green. Uh, this one's quite dirty and it's got a wobbly stick. So we're gonna go through it today. We're gonna pull it apart and try and repair the stick. So stick with me and I'll show you how to do it. So these things, you know, they're getting on uh, to be 20 years old now. I think they came out at around 97 um, and it's 2017. So, you know, they've done well for their age, but pretty much all of them have worn out sticks now. So you're going to have to do something about that. Um, there's a couple of different methods to repair the stick or to replace it completely. But um, I've come across some replacement parts today. We're going to try and fit and we'll just see what difference that makes. So... We'll also give it a good clean. This one's really filthy. So what you're going to need to do is just grab yourself a screwdriver and take out the screws underneath. There's quite a lot actually. So there's two on the side, uh, two here, one in the middle and two on this side. And then there's two smaller screws right down the center there, uh, right next to the connector. So pull those out and we can lift the lid. Okay, so with those out, um, you might just need to give it a tap, just hit the last few screws out. Um, and then the whole thing will just lift apart. So this underside actually is the part that lifts off um, and we leave the front intact. So those two little ones just fell out onto my bench. So put those aside, because they are actually smaller screws, but all the others are all the same size. Um, so we're going to give this a wash, as I said, you know, this Z button can stay in place, that's fine. Uh, you'll notice that the left and right triggers fall straight out, that's also fine, but we'll give them a wash while we're at it. You lift your cable out of the strain relief, lift up the little uh, conductive pads on the sides, pull that one apart. Unplug the joystick off the back there. Um, and we've got three more screws around the joystick. So one, two, three, um, and ultimately four, that little one in there uh, to get the actual casing apart. But let's pull it out of the unit first. Okay, so that all comes out. Um, now these ones are the shinier, uh, you know, goldy colored ones. They're, they're, those three are the same. Um, all the others were black. So you can kind of keep track of those. You know, there's all sorts of bugs and stuff in this one. Uh, and this stick is really, really wobbly. So it definitely needs some attention. So let's take out that final fourth screw. Pull that apart. Now that's a little black one, which is actually the same as one that went down the side of the uh, connector. So there's going to be three of those. You sort of just keep track of that. Now the whole thing is going to start to spring apart. So this is where you've got to sort of pay a little bit of attention to what you're doing so you know how to put it back together. So you kind of squeeze it on the top and open up these little clips on the back. Then the whole thing will just lift up. And we're left with a powdery mess inside. So that this one's actually really bad. It's probably one of the worst I've ever seen. So it's a good example for today's video. So what goes on is these black um, rotating sort of gears on, on the side here. There's one at the top and there's one on the side. They give the um, position information when you move the joystick. And they're controlled by these swinging little, uh, I don't know what you want to call them, little gates, I guess. Um, so there's one of these swinging pieces, top and bottom, like the carriage or something you want to call it. I don't know. Um, and what happens over time is the base of the joystick, which is right here, that's one solid piece of plastic, that very tip there rubs against the, the lower white um, bowl, like the, the, the tray sort of thing down there. And that powdery plastic is what, what you get. This wears it away. So that's not good at all. And uh, you really need to clean that out and then replace these parts these are what actually fails that piece is actually 
in not bad a condition. Normally the center of these grooves wear right out. So that's actually interesting. The bowl's got a lot of wear there. Um, now let's pull this side apart. So you have a look before you completely dismantle this top side. Take note of which way it all sits. So the gear itself is towards the flat rear edge, not the front. And this piece is horizontal, so it locks in place. Uh, the white ring is on top of the spring and the spring just sits on top. So let's now pull it apart. We'll just rotate that center. That piece will come out. The ring will come out and the spring will come out. And the joystick, if you rotate it again, will actually pull right through the whole plastic case. So we can give that a proper clean as well. So you'd be really tempted to blow all that white plastic out right now, but don't do it because it's going to go everywhere. Uh, you really need to take that and wash it out and get it nice and clean because it's going to go everywhere. Now this, this circuit board, we're lucky, it'll just lift right out. Um, so you don't need to get that wet. It'll just literally come out like that. Um, they're the little sensors that sense the, the wheel, like the gear rotation. Okay, so don't drop that like I did because you end up with uh, shit all over the bench and I didn't want to do that, but that's the way this worked out. So we need to look at what's actually wearing away and that'll help determine how to repair this. So I'm just gonna give this bowl a little wipe out before I wash it, just to see what's going on. So just use a cloth. Um, and then we just refit our large gear and just have a quick look. And we can sort of see that there's a huge gap now underneath that bowl. So a lot of that plastic has been worn away and that, that gives it the um, sort of a, the sloppy loose feel. So I've just got two other joystick parts here from a different controller. To give you a better idea of what actually goes wrong, these two gears, they have very obvious wear on them. You can see how they're, they're not straight anymore, they're not parallel. That, that edge there is completely worn down. Uh, it's not meant to be nice and straight. And this one is also completely rounded off and not straight. So the, the, these two out of a different controller have had a uh, different type of wear, but very significant wear. And that really adds to the um, sloppiness of the stick. So going back to our parts, um, they're not too bad visually, but they are worn. Um, and this bowl has really copped a beating. So in an effort to, re to repair all this, we actually just order new plastic little um, carriages or little uh, brackets, whatever you want to call these things. Um, these are brand new and I'll show you where to get these. Um, they're actually not cheap. They're, they're aftermarket, but they're very high quality. Um, I've only found one seller that actually sells these. Um, they're about $3 Australian as a pair, so they're not cheap at all, but I think they, they do a quite a good job. So it's a bit tighter fit, which is what you want. And they're nice and straight. So the actual uh, plastic little sides, they're nice and straight, and that's so it holds a really nice um, bite against the bottom of the joystick. So that's what's going on. The joystick moves this whole rail and you want it to be extremely tight tolerance, really. Um, if it's slightly out at all, it will just move around and you won't get a very good result. So at this stage, before we go any further and really fit the parts, I think we should take it outside and wash it uh, and just get rid of all this powder. So I'm gonna do that now. Uh, I won't show you that process because it's pretty boring. Just washing all the plastic parts uh, separately, uh, even the ring, even the spring. If, if it's got powder on it, we'll wash it. We're not going to use these original parts anymore. Um, you can't really repair them. Uh, you, you might be able to get away with some sort of tape or super glue method, but they're really disposable and I wouldn't bother. Um, wash the joystick. Um, the board's probably okay, you don't need to do that, but wash the plastic controller parts as well. So. Um, I'll take that outside and I'll give that a clean. Um, the board itself, yeah, you should really lift this out of the controller. It just comes straight out. Um, these are the contacts 
we're going to clean all these black points here. That's what makes contact under the membranes. So we're going to give them a clean with isopropyl alcohol in a second. But for right now, pull out these membranes and we'll wash the whole thing. Okay, so we're back from the cleaning and that's uh, that's come up really well. It's all nice and dry and clean and you know, our parts came up pretty well at the same time. So let's go ahead and reassemble all this. Uh, you start off with the, the top side here actually. Uh, we put our spring in and we get our white plastic uh, ring. Uh, you'll notice that there's actually um, a lip on the ring. So the lip face is towards the spring uh, and that just basically secures it and, and stops it moving around. Uh, and then we put our joystick in, but you know what? The very first thing you need to do is grab your spring and just give it a bit of a pull and stretch it just a little bit. Um, and that, you know, because over the years it's been compressed, so it doesn't hurt to stretch it back out a little bit. So put your joystick through you just have to spin it until that goes completely through. Then we put our spring in, then our white washer sits on top with the ring side down. Uh, then we take our, our new piece or our original, if that's what you want to do, the smaller of the two, there's, there's two sizes. There's uh, the large one and the small one. So you take the small one in this case, um, the arch goes upwards like that and just fit it over the joystick and then spin it into place. So it's, it's really that simple. So the joystick will be facing horizontal. The plastic gear will face towards the black, uh, the, the back, so the, the gear, the black gear faces towards the back of the, uh, the housing. Uh, and that'll all hold itself together now. It's, um, that's ready to assemble. And once it's squashed into place, the joystick obviously comes up. Uh, and the spring gives it nice tension to move around on. And that's what you feel. You feel the spring tension. So a little stretch there I think is really good. Now we look at the bottom casing. Um, now the gears only go one way. So there's a slot at the top and there's a slot on the right. So obviously that's the way it goes. It just sits into place like that. You can put your little board back in place. And... Now we look at our larger of the two uh, gears and we know that this one is running vertically. So this one must run horizontally, must sit like that. Uh, and then basically we could just go ahead and fit this back together. So you hold it, with the black one on the bottom, this one won't fall apart. Just give it a slight wiggle so it all locks into place. Click the rear clips in and the front should squash down like that. If it doesn't quite squash down cleanly, just use a small screwdriver, just move things around a little bit and that will. Now, if we just hold that with our fingers, you know, we can sort of feel the joystick tension. It's actually pretty good now. So those new parts have really tightened this whole thing up and slightly stretching the spring helps as well. But there is one more thing we can do. That's actually pretty good. But there is one more thing we can do, and if yours doesn't come back that good, just pull it apart a little bit. So we know for a fact that the white bowl down there was um, pretty worn out, and all the powdery plastic comes from that white bowl. And that's because the end of the joystick here rubs against that all day. So as you move the joystick, it's just rubbing, rubbing, rubbing. So we really need to build the surface of that bowl back up, or just extend the surface of the joystick just a little bit. Uh, I think it's easier to put a bit of glue on the end of this joystick just a little bit and just extend the length of that joystick just to give it a little bit more uh, pressure uh, to make up for all that plastic that has been worn away. You could also put super glue into the bowl, but I find that a little bit more difficult because um, it's just hard to get a nice smooth surface. So I would recommend just using a bit of um, Sally's uh, super glue. I've got this bottle here with the squeeze triggers on the side so you can sort of really control what you're doing. Uh, and then very gently just put a tiny drop on top like that. Uh, I didn't give you the closest look at that, but 
If you look closely now, there's a very small uh, round blob of super glue on top. So I'll put this outside, I'll let it dry, and we'll come back and finish off the cleaning and the reassembly. So while we wait for that to, um, to dry outside, let's give these parts a quick clean up. And all you're gonna need for that is, you know, the usual suspects, isopropyl alcohol, and the other usual suspects, uh, a cotton tip or cotton bud, you might say. So, you know, I like to just line all these parts up um, in a row um, and basically just give them a nice spray like that. And then just grab your cotton tip and just rub the black contacts. Now, you don't need to rub it that hard. We're, we're kind of just wiping and cleaning off any contaminants. We're not really trying to rub the surface right down or anything. So these are little carbon pads and you know, you'd have to put a fair bit of force on them to, to ruin them, but just give them a bit of a rub like that. And that'll help the buttons make better contacts. They'll get, they'll be much more responsive and you won't have to push them as hard. They'll just, they'll just work. So that's the tip for all controllers really. So you do that. Uh, and just as important, you spray the board itself just with a light spray. Um, change ends of the cotton bud and just give these black pads a similar sort of clean. You know what? Not much black stuff came off that, so that's actually a good sign. It's They're pretty clean, these ones. But you might do this to some other controllers and, you know, I've made videos on other controllers where they just come off really black and dirty, so, you know, that's from years of sort of use. Uh, you just definitely want to give them a good clean. It doesn't take long and it really, really, really helps. So yeah, look, you know what, both ends, not too bad this time, but um, it's well worth it. Oh, I almost forgot. There are two up the top here, so give them a, a quick rub down as well. Okay, they're the triggers. Um, well, and you know what, I forgot another one. That's the Z button. So clean the Z button while you're there as well. Okay, so they're all done. Um, I'll go and grab the part and let's put it all back together. Okay, so I've grabbed this from outside and it's uh, it's all set and ready to go. So let's put that back together. Um, but one last step, which is a little bit optional, is it's a good idea to put some grease um, on these parts just to stop them wearing out again. So, and you just need a, a really small amount of grease. You just put it on a cotton tip like that and rub it. Uh, inside on the bowl and on those on those pieces definitely on the end of that joystick now that we've um, now that we've uh, you know extended that a little bit and that should all be fine a little bit on the gears themselves let's put this back together and see how it all goes so I'll just hold that down yeah, there you go, that's that's really nice. So really springy, it, it springs right back to dead center, which is perfect. Uh, and it's got a lot of tension on it from that spring we adjusted. Uh, it's nice and smooth because of the grease and um, the extended um, stick, I think, yeah, I think that glue helps a little bit. Um, you know, these steps are a little bit optional, guys. Ultimately, you probably just need um, the new parts, you know, the brand new parts, they really, really help. Um, I wouldn't mess about with your old parts because, you know, they're just, they're so far gone that you're just gonna run into all sorts of trouble. All right, so that's pretty much done. I'm gonna screw this all back together and we'll get on with it. So we put a black screw back in there. The other black screws go down that little uh, expansion slot area. Okay, that's locked in. Make sure it's nice and uh, clamped together. Make sure that's really tight because otherwise uh, you won't get the full effect of how uh, tight that feels if that screw is not put in properly. Um, that's it. And the reverse order, let's just put it all, all in. So start off with the buttons. Um, so you need to get your buttons in the right position. The blue one goes at the bottom here. Um, the green one goes at the top, 
just rotate them until they drop into place. So I got those two in the wrong spots. Let's just move them around. There you go. And they'll drop right in. If they don't drop all the way in, they're on the right spots. So that's how you sort of tell. Okay, then drop your D-pad in. Uh, just get the notch aligned to that bit of uh, plastic down the bottom there. It only goes one way. These buttons all actually only go one way. If you look really closely, they've all got different uh, pin layouts. So you can't really get them too mixed up. Uh, if you're unsure, just uh, just keep rotating them until they drop into place. But, you know, and then look underneath and make sure it all looks correct. All right, let's, uh, let's put these back in place. So the contact uh, conductive surfaces face upward, obviously, because uh, that's where the board's going to sit. So slide that over the post. It goes that way over the two center pins. Um, put our center one on. Uh, now we can drop our board on and the, the two shoulder buttons and the Z button, we'll put those pads on. Uh, after this step, it's just good to get that on now. Run the cable uh, through the right position. Little conductive pads on this side have little um, little lobes that little pieces that stick out to uh, orientate that the correct way. So just get that all set up, slot them down into their little grooves uh, and put the triggers back in place. So the whole lot will just sit like that. Um, then we can put our joystick in, it sits in the middle. So we'll use our silver screws It's easier to hold the whole thing at this stage and screw it together rather than leave it on the bench. If your trigger falls out like mine just did, it doesn't matter. You, know, you probably should do this part first actually because yeah, it's gonna be bumped around a little bit. Okay, put that back in. Make sure it's all sitting right. Move that cable out of the way into its correct position. And don't forget to connect your little joystick plug, otherwise nothing will work. And that's pretty much it. Put our case back on. Bit of a squeeze, make sure it all sits nice and flush, like that doesn't. So there you go, just move it until it does. And then you're right to put a screw, screw or two in just to hold it. I'm just gonna put one in the handle down here. Put a tension on that, and that's gonna hold the whole case together. We can put the rest of the screws in later. Just give it a good feel, make sure all the buttons are facing the right way, make sure Everything looks okay, everything spring loaded. Um, really, we should really plug this in now and give it a test. Um, but that's it. So it's come up quite well. I'll give this plastic a condition now with uh, some plastic conditioner, such as Armor Roll for you know, a car related product. That's very good. It absorbs into the plastic and it doesn't leave it too greasy. Um, the newer products out there are really good for that. So we'll do that. Um, and then we'll give it a give it a test to make sure it's all responsive and I, I'm sure it will be. So these parts, um, I'll post a link down below where to buy them. I just got them off eBay, but for a, from a specific seller who uh, I think is a manufacturer of them. So uh, I'll post a link, you can check that out and pick up a set for yourself. I bought a packet of um, 10. So, you know, I think it's worth buying a few because it makes the whole deal a bit more affordable. Um, and you can fix multiple controllers. So that's it for today, guys. Hope uh, that was interesting for you. And 
Uh, for me, it's been a great result. I'm really happy with the, the quality. Um, so that's it, I'll leave the video there and I'll see you again next time. Bye.